What's going on guys? Welcome to Northern Minnesota in the fall and more importantly, welcome to how to make a WordPress blog at SiteGround. In this video, we're going to use WordPress.org, the most popular CMS or content management system, powering over 34% of all websites. That's huge, way bigger than Squarespace at a little 1.5%. We're going to use SiteGround, one of the top WordPress recommended web hosts, one of the biggest hosts in the industry that's been doing great things forever. And at the end, I'm gonna show you how to install a theme for WordPress, which is gonna be my favorite theme for blogging at the moment. I love this theme because it resembles the blog we're gonna to feature today in this video called Pinch of Yum. They're a Minnesota-based food blog by Lindsay and Bjork, who started small, but have been making amazing recipes for their family, their dog, and have now grown to make thousands and thousands of dollars per month, and more importantly, help a lot of people cook and look like their own professional chef when really they just followed a recipe online. So we're gonna do all those things in this video. I really hope you'll stick around. So without further ado, let's jump in, run the intro, and let's look at the steps we need to make a WordPress blog at SiteGround. Let's do it. All right, so to get started and make your own WordPress blog slash website, they are the same thing when you start out. You just wanna visit the link beneath the video. And this is just an example of a previous video people followed. So just pop beneath the video and click on the bit.ly link and then we can proceed. All right guys, so welcome to SiteGround. So you might wonder why do you wanna be on the Manage WordPress hosting page right here? instead of on the normal web hosting page right here. We can see we get all sorts of other essential WordPress features. Obviously, we don't wanna miss out on that, and that's basically the reason we're gonna get manage WordPress hosting instead of the web hosting. Same price, more features. Okay, so now that we all understand that, we can just move forward, and even though they're saying the best seller is the Grow Big, we're on a budget today, so we're just gonna go with Startup, Crafted for a Great WordPress Start. And now you can click on the get plan button. Okay guys, so step one was just choosing the plan that we did right there. So that's done. And now I'll walk you through all of step two and step three so that you can move forward and install your WordPress software flawlessly. And I'll try to answer any questions that might come up along the way, but also let me know in the comments. All right, so the next order of business is to enter your domain name. If you have a new one, click the top box here and pop in your new domain name. Or if you already own a domain, like from GoDaddy or somewhere else, just check this bottom box. But in my case, I have a new idea for a domain name and I wanna get everything at SiteGround today. So I'm gonna click register new domain and then pop in SiteGround website WP guide. All right, then on the right, you'll see a drop down menu for a .com, but there's also plenty of other options that could be cool, like .net, .org, .biz. The .com is the most recognizable. That's probably what people will think of when they think of your site. Like nobody imagines visiting facebook.org when someone tells them to go to Facebook. And the .com is also the most profitable if you wanna sell your website someday. However, any of these other domain names might be helpful to tell people what you're about, like you're about clothing or coffee. And you can rank in Google pretty much just as good with any domain name extension here. All right, and click proceed. All right, cool, the next order of business is to create our account. So with SiteGround, we just need an email and a password and you have an account. All right, and then confirm the password and we're done with that. Scrolling down, you can give yourself some client information. If SiteGround asks for your full postcode, just Google yourself and you can get the full nine digit postcode. And then phone number. All right, good job. Now we can come down to payment information here. All right, so just pop in your payment information like you would at any sort of online shopping experience like at Apple, Amazon, eBay, Ebates, wherever you shop online. So I'm just gonna blank this out here and enter in my payment info. All right, sorry guys, getting a lot of text here. You'll see that SiteGround also accepts Visa, MasterCard, and Discover, so I hope that helps you out. But if you can only pay with PayPal or Venmo or something for some reason, let me know. I'm sure we can figure out a solution for you with SiteGround. So now we're done with that, we're gonna come down to our purchase information, and this is basically super easy. We just have to confirm that we're getting what we want. So we have a plan, startup. 
If you want to change the plan, I think you can hit this little refresh button. But we're good with startup. We like that because that's the cheapest way to install WordPress at SiteGround. Data center, you might want to take a look at. If you have an audience that's in a different part of the world, then you might want to opt for one of the other headquarter data centers at SiteGround so that your servers and information are closer to your audience. Next up, we have our term period, which is how long you're registering hosting for. I really like 12 months. My first hosting order ever I got was for 12 months, and that gave me a perfect amount of time to learn how to blog, how to use WordPress, um, how to make money with WordPress, and set me up for success. But if you choose 24 months or 36 months, you will see that you get a slightly better value, and that is just because you pay a little bit less per month. 12 months, though, is great for today. We're going to keep that. Hosting price is cool. All right, and of course, you get that discount locked in. It's normally $11.95 with the regular price, but because you use my link, we've secured the best discount. So congrats on that. And now we can just come down to extra services. All right, so like I said before, we're on a budget. So just gonna keep the domain for now. And I believe we can add these later on if you want. All right, so that brings us to our total for this price right here. In our case, it's 63 and change, which comes out to about $5 a month if we divided it by 12. We get the amazing WordPress services of SiteGround. You can install WordPress with one click in the next step without any coding knowledge. And then you basically get the same website as the major blogs like Mashable, Forbes, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Katy Perry, Walt Disney, Time Magazine. They're all using WordPress. And it's really awesome to me that for this small price, you can be on the same level playing field with those brands. And if you're interested in learning how to make money with WordPress, just drop me a note in the comments. I have some fun resources on that. All right, so that's all I'll say for now. I'm super excited. Let's go ahead now and just check I confirm and I'd like to receive news and offers. Sure, why not? We like SiteGround. And in the next step, we'll install your own copy of WordPress together. All right, so let's click pay now and let's move on to the next step. Let's do it. Good job guys. So now we can click proceed to customer area. You might notice a ton of cool things to play around with and learn now that you have your own SiteGround customer area, but most of you are probably eager to get WordPress set up on your new blog, so let's just click set up site. So now we're in the add new website screen. If you add multiple websites at SiteGround, you'll see this screen a lot. And website and blog are the same terms here because we're just gonna install WordPress. So under start new website, we're gonna click on select. Then where it says choose application, we're gonna select WordPress. So now we just need to enter in our email and pop in a password and we'll be all set to install WordPress. Try to make sure you have a strong password and now we can click continue. It'll ask you if you want any additions to your new WordPress blog, like the SG site scanner. This one checks your website daily and lets you know if you've been hacked, but I think you'd be able to tell if that happened. So we're gonna skip that one. And then we have domain privacy. This one's actually good because it makes sure that you don't get spam sent to you automatically just from registering a domain name. So people can't see like who you are and see your personal information. So. I like to add that one nowadays. Domain privacy isn't mandatory. I actually have a lot of domain names and websites from the past without privacy on, and I'm doing fine. I don't get much spam. But nowadays, a lot of people are starting to go with domain privacy. So we need to pay for that, and it's only $12 a year. So I'm just gonna leave the payment card I have in there, confirm, and pay now. And it's going to jump right into creating your WordPress website. So right now, SiteGround is going about installing WordPress. One thing I really love about SiteGround is it only takes two minutes to get you up and running with your website. On a lot of other website hosts, um, it could take more time to install WordPress, like half an hour or an hour. But as you can see there, you're all set and you now have a new WordPress blog. So congratulations, you're probably super excited now. How do we log in and build your WordPress blog? Well, one option is just to open a new tab, type in our domain name, and we can see what we see. All right, so that's super cool. WordPress is actually ready here. 
a few minutes ago we had nothing we had no domain name no wordpress site and now you have your own complete wordpress.org installation just like the pros like forbes jay-z walt disney beyonce and so on and so forth are using so that's great news as far as our username and password we can open up our email click on the one that says your website blah 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 at siteground and scroll down and find your wordpress password it'll say something like start editing your site content you can go ahead and do that through your wordpress admin panel so they give us a link to log in here a username and they say the password is just the one we made during installation a few moments ago should be easy enough as long as you didn't forget that already so i don't want to use this admin url because it's really long and you'd never want to actually type this in again when you want to log into your blog so i'm going to go back to our WordPress site here just at the domain name.com on your homepage and type in forward slash WP dash admin ADMIN and hit enter. And that's how everyone logs in. They just type that in after their domain name, that forward slash WP dash ADMIN and hit enter. Now we can go ahead and log in. We're going to hit remember me to save time in the future and you can bookmark this if you want to make it even easier and log in. All right, and welcome to your new WordPress site at SiteGround. So from having used a lot of different hosts, I know that it doesn't always look this good, but this looks really cool. It's nice to have a custom welcome page. Now, before you click start now and begin making your WordPress blog, I wanna tell you two more important steps. So SiteGround, after we made our WordPress site, told us to point your domain. If you see this message, I want you to follow me on this one quick step here because you should know how to point your domain and change the name servers just for future projects. All right, so what we wanna do is just copy these two pieces of information here. I'm gonna copy them. Open up a new text file document. There it is. Just gonna paste those in and now I'll show you where to put them. All right, so back at SiteGround, we're gonna click on Home and then services, then domains, and you'll see your domain name that you bought right here. Congratulations, looking super nice and shiny. And now we're just gonna click on manage, and then manage name servers. All right, and then what we want is for name server one to match our name server one that we copy pasted that SiteGround told us about. So it does, that looks good, just reading over it, and name server two, matches name server two. So name server one is just NS1, blah, blah, blah. Name server two is just NS2, blah, blah, blah. And it looks like that was a false alarm. Our name servers are already working, so you don't need to touch this at all. But if these pieces of information look different than these two, then go ahead and make sure you paste the ones that SiteGround gave us right here where my mouse is in this screen, and then click confirm. Name servers tell your domain name where to go. So if your domain name was bought at like GoDaddy and then you got SiteGround hosting, you would have to enter in your SiteGround name servers at GoDaddy to say, hey, when someone visits the domain name, go over to that thing at SiteGround that I made. Or if you moved your website to a different location and then you wanted to like launch it, a lot of people launch by changing the name servers. It just tells the domain name that when anyone, including you, visits the domain name, that they should go to the proper website. All right, ours are working, so we don't need to change a thing here. The second step you need to do is just verify your domain name. You'll get an email from SiteGround that says something like verification required. So just open that up, scroll down, and click on the approved domain name link. All right, those two things said, we can start working in WordPress. So come back to our SiteGround window, and let's click start now and get going. All right, so the funnest part comes right now. Um, that is a word, by the way, funnest. I've made it one. And we're gonna choose a fancy design for your website. So here's some free themes they recommend. These are all really popular. Coffee shop, obviously they probably know me and just, you know, pick that one through the algorithm. And then, yeah, you might like them. You might not like them. These are just some of the best themes that people use at SiteGround. If you scroll up, you can also choose categories. So we obviously want to make a blog. So blog options. SiteGround comes with many free blog themes, which also look professional and stunning. We use news site in our last tutorial. And the reason we like these free blog templates or free templates for any of these different categories with SiteGround is because your website looks good out of the box. You don't have to move things around and custom code and 
deal with a blank white screen, which scares a lot of people, your website or blog is gonna look good right away. Now, if you do wanna actually hack up your site from scratch and go ahead and just you know build it like someone might have 10 years ago, then just go to your website, click on this button to go to the dashboard, hover on appearance and click themes, and you can find any theme in WordPress by clicking add new. A lot of them are really basic and minimalist and you'll end up doing a lot more from scratch. Or you can just edit your totally blank homepage that you see here, which is using the WordPress 2019 theme. Or I could even show you how to delete everything on this page right here and make it completely white screen. And then you can do everything from super scratch. But in our case, I know a lot of people want their blog to look good right away. They want it to look like the design they choose and not choose a design and get something that looks different. So these fancy design templates are really useful to accomplish that. And the one we're gonna use today is cookery. So you can click on the plus to preview any of these. All right, and I'll be showing you how to replace everything in this free cookery layout, like the logo, the navigation menu, the social media icons, which are in the header, which everyone likes. I'm gonna show you how to replace these featured images, the circle profile box, colors, fonts, and so on and so forth, like this cool parallax image right here. So we're gonna stick with this look, but of course you can choose any look that catches your fancy. Um, I just know from doing a little of my own background research and homework that this one performs particularly well for blogs that wanna be profitable. Okay, so with that said, let's hit select. And it's gonna say great choice. Okay, so they approve. Now it's gonna say recommended elementary. What is that? Elementor is a really big deal in WordPress right now. They're probably the best page builder that uses drag and drop. So you don't need to know code. You can actually design your website by clicking on things and saying like, oh, I want you beneath this, or I want you on the upper right corner. That's what Elementor does. It's of course free, like almost everything in WordPress now that we have our own hosting. So really good and we'll confirm. Now it'll ask if we want a few more plugins that are recommended. So contact form is good. Jetpack, we don't need, that connects with wordpress.com. Shop, all right, you could set up an e-commerce shop if you want, but that'll be a different video. And calendar, so I don't really like calendars. I never really know what day it is. So we're just gonna keep contact form selected and continue. Now there's some marketing plugins, all right, more plugins. So Google Analytics, we're not gonna use because I like doing that by scratch at uh, you know Google Analytics site themselves. We are gonna select Yoast because every blog post should be optimized for SEO and Yoast makes that easy. And we're not gonna do the gross subscribers list because I recommend Constant Contact to do that separately. Really fun, easy, and you kinda of wanna manage that outside of your blog. Now complete. All right, installation is underway. All right, congrats, your site is ready. Now we're just gonna to go to dashboard. All right guys, so now I'll do a quick tour of your dashboard for you. As we saw, we just installed the blog foodie theme, so your whole site will look different, but you'll be a lot better at managing your site if you know uh, how to use these buttons over here. So right away on your dashboard homepage, right here, that's highlighted in blue, you'll see you have some buttons like view site, manage pages, and change design. You can also work on those plugins that we just installed. And then there's just some general information which you may or may not want to click. I don't use that stuff too much. Down below, there's even WordPress events. They want to stay in touch with you so they know I'm in Minnesota. You know, maybe you want to go network and learn about forms and get some guest posts or some different gigs. That's always a good idea. All right, so the first part of your dashboard I want to show you is the themes. So if we hover on appearance, we can click themes. And we can see your site now is running Ocean WP which is easily one of the top five best free themes in WordPress, so that's perfect. And then we have the other themes that WordPress came with. So originally our blog slash website was using the 2019 theme. It's really good by WordPress, but of course we want something that's not just good, but great. If you wanna figure out how to make a website with one of these default WordPress themes, that's always a good idea just to play around. However, a lot of other people will be using those themes because WordPress comes uh, pre-installed with them. You can easily delete a theme like 2016 just by opening it and then in the lower right corner clicking the red delete button just to save a little space on your copy of WordPress. Next thing I want to show you is plugins. If we just click on the plugins tab, 
you'll see the list of all the plugins our site came with. So it should be about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right now. That's super cool. We're gonna use all of these, I believe. But if you did wanna get rid of a plugin, you can just hit deactivate, and then after that, you'll see a delete button. As long as it's a free plugin and your site isn't depending on it right now, there's no harm in deleting a plugin. You can install it back onto your site by clicking the add new button and searching for it. Next up, we have the users tab. If you click on users, you'll see us right here. And then we can click on our little name there. And if you wanna scroll down and change your password, this is where to do it right here. You just click generate password and then write in a new one over this one. So you know, new blah, blah, and then make sure it's stronger. So you wanna give it all sorts of other stuff and then save it. But in our case, I'm happy with the password we chose. You can also change how your site looks. Like I use an iPhone, for example, and I like kind of a certain texture of all the buttons. Um, or maybe Android does that too, I'm not sure. But if you want to look at the site with a little bit different lighting, then go ahead and change that in admin color scheme. Okay, that does it for our tour. In other videos, I've explained every single tab, but you guys have told me you wanna just start building, so let's just start building. We are gonna click on our site title to get to the homepage. We can leave that because we didn't have any changes. And now we can see our beautiful cookery blog. All right, so we might as well do this like a web designer would that you would hire in your town for $5,000, except for you get to save that money, of course, by doing it DIY for free with me here. So we're gonna start from top to bottom. Go ahead and edit this uh, top bar and then the logo, nav menu, so on and so forth. Let's do it. Okay, so to edit the very top of our site, which is the subscribe bar, we need to start using Elementor. So what better way to begin than with a little Elementor tricks? We can hover where it says edit with Elementor at the top, and then we're gonna click on site header. And we can see here lives the entire site header, which is basically just the top bar and our nav menu. So the rest of the site goes below it, but we're working on the header. You can click anywhere in Elementor to start editing. That's the beauty of it. It's just point and click. And then on the left-hand side, you'll get like what the theme creators made for us. So OceanWP decided to make this beautiful little subscribe text for us with all this HTML because they know that it looks good. And the beauty I find of this is that you can actually copy and paste this and put it on other parts of your site. But right now we just want to edit the words like subscribe. So you can say like join our email club. And then to edit the text, you just simply edit any part of the text or you can click on top of it and just edit right where it says what it says. Beautiful. Next, we can click on the actual email subscribe form itself. We don't usually make an email form this early in one of my videos. That's usually at the end after we learn all of WordPress. But it's so important that you start collecting subscribers right away on your blog and make those first visitors into loyal subscribers that I figured why not show you how to do it right now. So what we have here is a MailChimp form that OceanWP inserted for us. If you want, you can play with the title and that'll just change like the structure of the form. But in our case, it looks really good being minimal like this. So all we really need to do is get a MailChimp account set up and then go ahead and enter in our ID so it'll actually start putting your subscribers on your MailChimp list. So let's click update and make those first changes. And now it says you need to set your API key and list ID on the settings page. So let's go there. Okay, here we are in our dashboards theme panel. I'm just gonna skip this. Now we can see all the different areas we can customize on our site. Right now we wanna find something about MailChimp. So let's click integrations. And this section is dedicated to MailChimp. So used for MailChimp widget in the newsletter and everywhere MailChimp is on our site. There's an article on how to get your API key and list ID. So we can click that. And then we can click here and it should take us to MailChimp, all right? And of course, if this is the first time you start a blog, you probably don't have MailChimp. So let's get a MailChimp. Let's click create an account. Super easy and free, by the way. Just gonna pop in my email that I use for blog business, a username. How about SiteGround Toots, the name of the site, and a password. And get started. Now let's go to our email inbox. There's MailChimp, activate your MailChimp account and activate account. 
we're not a robot. All right, and we're in. We're gonna keep the free plan selected and just click complete. So this works until you have 2,000 subscribers, which probably is gonna be a little ways off. All right, we're just gonna complete the basic information. Grab our URL by highlighting it, copying it, and entering it in at SiteGround. Continue. Now we will add our address or business address. No, we don't have a list yet, and continue. We'll do this later, continue. And not right now for the marketing path because we just want a basic email list. Accounts ready, Freddy? Um, sure, we'll stay in the loop and let's go. MailChimp will say that our account is finished being set up. We can design your first email, but really all we want is just a way to collect email subscribers and we want that API key. So if we go back to the article on how to get that key, it'll say click account, extras, API key. All right, so let's click on ourselves and account and extras and API keys. All right, scroll down and create a key. There you have it, you're now legit with MailChimp and we're just gonna highlight it and copy it. Now come back to WordPress in our theme panel and let's paste that in. Next, click on audience, view contacts, and click on settings, and then audience name and defaults. And we'll get this second little audience ID, which is also called a list ID. Copy that and come back to our theme panel and paste it in right here. And now save changes. And MailChimp should be working. So now when someone goes to your site and pops in their email address and says, go, I wanna join your email club, you'll see their new contact information in your MailChimp home and you'll see them in audience. So ideally you want this number to go up and if you keep doing the right things and keep creating great content, it most certainly will. Next, we can learn how to add our logo to the site. So right now it's this cool little cookery icon and text. But if you wanna make your own logo, which I'm sure you do, then head over to Logo Maker, that's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R without the E.com. Click in the gray space and now let's search for a logo graphic. In our case, coffee is usually good. But you can search for literally anything like tree or mountain or compass, you get the picture and you can change the color after you select it. All right, don't go too crazy looking at icons. Usually the simpler, the better. So I really like this one. I'm gonna click and select it. And now it's in our editing panel. We can now click and drag to move it. And you can change the color right away in your color wheel. Just click anywhere that you might like for a new color. Beautiful. To add text, just click on the T and then start typing. So that's just a fake name. We can just drag and position it with the convenient little guidelines and then drag in the corner to make it bigger. You can click on the paint bucket, which is also the select icon. So there's the paint bucket. And now you can actually click on individual parts of the logo to change the color. Cool. To change the font, just click, to change the font, just click back to the T and now it might get some more text. We can just hit delete, but then just click on top of your original text and we can change the font in the upper menu. Beautiful. Just gonna drag that towards the center a little more and we're all set. So once you like your logo, go ahead and crop it in the lower right down here. And if it doesn't get it right, you can just help out the white, bring it in so it's as trim as possible and hit enter. Now we can save it by clicking on the floppy disk. We're gonna go to no thanks, download the low res file and we can title it and save it. You also have to give credit to Logo Maker. Make sure to follow this guide and give credit. All right, back on our site, we can edit that logo just by clicking edit with Elementor. And now I guess, welcome to the original Elementor editing window. So before we were just editing a header, now we're actually editing the whole page, everything that Ocean WP created for us because they're just so good at Elementor. You can make all these things from scratch in the future, but I think it's pretty much easier to have someone make them and then edit them and play with them and then sort of learn how everything works. And then someday you'll make one of these on your own from scratch. 
So we're going to hover on the logo and see that it actually doesn't um, open up an editing window and neither does the menu. So for example, when you click on these scrolling images, you can click on their settings, but there's really no settings for the logo. And that's because the logo actually lives in a different place. So let's click on the hamburger icon and go exit to dashboard. And now I'm going to take you to customize. Customize is like the secondary place where if you can't find something, it's probably living in customize. So we're going to hover on appearance and click customize. All right, now we're going to click on header. That's where logo lives. And we can remove the cute little logo, although I really did like that one. Click select logo, select files. We're going to find our new logo, which is probably in our download somewhere. Oh, just kidding. It's on the desktop. All right, so new logo version one. Double click to open it. And now your logo is uploaded to WordPress. So let's select it. We're going to skip the cropping so we get the whole thing. And it inserts itself perfectly. Nice job. Maybe not the perfect logo for you, but it'll definitely do the trick right now. You can also change the width of the logo if you want it to be a little bit bigger, as long as it stays inside a reasonable container. So it's a little too big. Beautiful. And publish. To change the way our navigation menu looks, click back and back in the customize window. And now we're going to click on menu. And then main menu, which OceanWP has set up for us, is right here. There's no need to rename it, but of course you can change the order of your menu items just by clicking and holding and dragging. To change what these menu tabs say, just open them up and change the tab. Let's close that tab. You can also change where this menu appears. So right now it's in the main location, but you could also put it in the top bar, footer, or mobile. Let's publish. Of course, you can also change the finer details, like the font of your menu or the color. Let's go back, back, and now let's just hit on typography. And here we have the typography of the entire site. So all you need to do is click on main menu, and you can change the font family right here. So Dosis is obviously really good, but maybe you want Dorsa. Not right now. You can change the size of it too and the letter spacing, so maybe it's a little bit too small for your audience. Make sure you get that pixels in there though as well. And there you have it. To change the menu color, go back, back. Now click on header, menu. And here we can change the color of the links, their position, which you probably wouldn't want to edit, and things like the link color. So just hit select and then I like double clicking on the current color hex and copying it so we don't lose it. But then you can just change the color manually if you want a different menu color. So that would definitely stand out. All right, there you have it, folks. Let's publish. Then lastly, in our header to change where our social buttons go and replace them with your own social pages, make sure you publish and X out of customizer. And now we're going to hover on from the home page. We're going to hover on Edit with Elementor and click Site Header again. And now we can see those little buttons are living right here. So just click on the section settings, which looks like an open book. And just kidding, we actually need to click on the pencil icon for the individual buttons that OceanWP made for us. Super cool. So here we find our social icons. You can just easily open up each individual tab like Facebook and replace that hash brown sign with your own little social media page. So in my case, we have facebook.com slash dear blogger. I usually like just writing it out. And you can hit on the link options to open that in a new tab if you want. Or no follow it. All right, do the same for Twitter and all the rest of them, and then you'll be set to go and collect social media fans. So I'm gonna do Twitter, and if you don't remember it, maybe you'll just go to Twitter and click on the home button and then click on yourself. Then you can copy the link. Then you can copy the link back to the site and then paste that in over the hash brown. All right, I'm gonna get rid of Pinterest. Really gotta start using it though and add in Instagram and YouTube on my own and then we'll be all set. And for the YouTube link, I'm gonna get clever and head to the blog and I'm gonna copy the link I have right here which is actually a subscription link. So right click, copy link address. And if we paste that in, it's like a custom subscription link. All right, so super cool. I like when people click that because it takes them to a subscribe page, saves them a couple clicks, and you really should subscribe so you get all the newest videos and WordPress help right when it comes out, when it's fresh. All right, we're going to paste that in on YouTube and update. And now we click on the hamburger, exit to dashboard, 
click on the site title to go to the home page and now we should have our links working beautifully all right great job so next we are going to edit our blog post carousel and what's going on in here is our most recent post is first and then second and third we also have a category like street food and a post title and then a read more link and if you click anywhere on the featured image it'll take us to that post so let's go ahead and make a new post and see how to put it in that carousel and to start let's just edit this post so we click edit post at the top and right away we can see we're using the new Gutenberg post editor which is the wonderful world of blocks so if you see this notification it means we're using Gutenberg and we want to use the older blog post editor because that's the one that most people still use and love so let's go to plugins and let's click add new and probably the second one to come up will be the classic editor because it's so popular so click install now <clears throat> and activate. All right, perfect. So now when we go to our home page and we do that process again, we're going to click on the first post, edit the post. Now it's going to look like WordPress should look, which is like this. So we have the text to edit. There's no blocks or anything confusing like that. So to edit your post, you can change the title. So you can write like my first blog post. You can also change the text easily that shows up just by deleting or changing what it says down here. This is the first paragraph. And it's all pretty self-explanatory and Microsoft Word ask. You can click on the toggle toolbar and get more tools like text color. And you can change the category on the right, like go from dinner to breakfast. Let's go ahead and update and let's see the changes we made. So now when we look at the post on the homepage, it should look a little bit different. It's breakfast, it's my first blog post, great. To make a new blog post, just hover on the skinny nav at the top where it says new and click post. I think every blog you make should have a welcome to the blog post to the blog because this helps explain to people why you're writing and what they can get from your blog. So we're going to write your story is super awesome and we're going to share it here for the world. New and amazing ways. All right, there's your post. We can add a new category like updates, add new category, and then to change the image that goes on the home page or on any place the blog is, that's going to be your featured image. So scroll down to featured image, click set featured image. Now I'm going to upload a file from my computer, just upload, select. Now I can find some images that I made on like PicMonkey for example, but those don't necessarily apply. If you're struggling to find a good featured image, one place I like going is Pixabay. Dot com. On Pixabay you can find free images, so you can look up something like coffee or workspace and search and find some cool images you've probably seen other bloggers using from time to time. Okay, to insert an image we're just going to choose it by clicking on it, then we're going to click free download. You can choose the size and download it, say you're not a robot, and download. Name it and save it and now go back to our new blog post and click select files. All right, there it is, double click. And now set featured image, voila, beautiful. Now let's publish. So now we can click view post in the skinny nav at the top and we can see our cool new post with a beautiful featured image, some text. You can see who wrote it, when, the category and the comments and everyone can comment right away. Hopefully you get a lot of them so it shows that your blog is social proof as they say. And now when we go to the homepage, we'll have one new blog post, awesome. If you notice that the sizing is off, it's because our featured image is a different size than these other images. Let's change that. So let's go back to our dashboard. We're going to click Media, where all our images live. And we're going to click on one of these featured images, like this couple. So this one's 1200 by 900 pixels. And the same goes for the other featured images, 1200 by 900. So we have to make that the case for our new image, 1200 by 900. To size down an image, you want to click edit image. <clears throat> now these numbers are pretty goofy so to make it easier on us I'm gonna go with an aspect ratio of 4 to 3 because I know that 1200 to 900 is really the same as 4 to 3. Now I'm gonna press and hold shift and click on top of the image and drag alright and then click and then drag a little more so we get more image and this will definitely be a 4 to 3 section of the image. 
we can see it still says four to three and now let's just click the crop button and save it and X out and now let's go back to our blog post and we might need to re-add that featured image but instead WordPress already figured it out that the image was changed and now it fits great job and as you add in more blog posts they will fill in on the second and third positions and so on and so forth in the carousel next with our blog posts you might have noticed that when you click them you get a sort of funny looking link with index.php and a date Google really just likes when you have keywords in your links and keeps it simple. So to get rid of that index PHP, blah, 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 let's go back to the dashboard and let's hover on settings and click permalinks. And then let's just choose post name and save it. And you're done with that. And now all your links will look clean and simple for Google. Next up to edit our circle box right here, which is about us, we are gonna go to edit with Elementor. And once you're here, you can just click on top of the image. This part's really easy because OceanWP has set up this whole section for us. And now we can just ch and now we can just click on the image to change it. Upload files, select files. All right, and I know I have a file in my email I want to use. All right, we have the luxury of just having gone on a vacation, so I'm just going to open up that one. And now we're just going to download it. All right, so circle image, save it. Now back in Elementor, we can just go to select files, double click to use it, and insert media. Beautiful. If it's not a perfect circle, it's because that picture itself is not a perfect square. Let's click on that image again and let's make it a square. So we already know how to edit an image. We can just click edit image. And now I'm gonna make the aspect ratio one to one for a square. Click and hold shift and click and drag. Keep shifting. And we're going to drag as much as we can in a square. Move it a little bit and crop it and save it. All right, now I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to refresh this Elementor window, reload it so it knows that that image was updated. Now we're going to click on top of that image one more time. Choose the image. We are now a square, insert media, and we are now a circle. Perfect. To change up the header in our About Us area, just click on top to highlight, double click rather, and write hi, whatever you want to say. Next, to change the subtext, click on the warm ipsum and start writing to your heart's content. This is a great place to say what the blog is about. Next, you'll want to get your social media buttons working, and I'll show you a trick here, which is to import this social media button section into this area so you don't have to write in those links twice. So let's make sure to update. And now let's see how to grab this social section and put it in this social section space. Okay, we're going to open up the blog in a new tab and we're going to go to the home page. Now we're going to hover on Edit with Elementor and click Site Header. Now we're going to right click on the pencil and hit Copy. And we're going to come back to the other page with Elementor opened. We're going to open a new section by clicking plus and then we're just going to hit Paste. And there you go, the social icons will come in. They're just looking a little funny because they're in the middle of a huge space. So what you have to do is click on the pencil and drag and drop those in right here in our About Us area. Beautiful. To delete the old social icons, let's right click on the pencil and hit delete. And perfect. Now the only thing I'm not sure how to do, if you have any ideas, let me know, is how to position these social icons aligned to the left, on the left side over here, instead of on the right. I've clicked the pencil a lot, can't figure out how to do it. If you know, please comment and let us know because that would look amazing. To change up our cookbook section, you can click on the text and just edit it like you would any text in Elementor. Then you can click on the button and change the get now text if you want. The arrow is just an icon, so that icon could be any icon you want. You can click on the icon and change it up really easily, but the arrow seems to do the job here. And then to change the background image, click on the column settings button, style and you'll find your image just click the image of the sandwiches and you can easily change it to an image of different sandwiches beautiful so this particular button is a great button to take someone to your community page or your subscribe page or maybe a pop out where it offers people the option to subscribe to a newsletter and get a free ebook download of course as usual i'll leave you a link on how to set up a newsletter with a free ebook download beneath the video in the description so check that out Next, to change the heading right here that says Get Latest Cookery Tips, just click on it and edit the text to your heart's content. You can also change the subtext in the same fashion. And now we have a divider line, which you can click and change the width of it easily. Just click on the width button and drag it, and there you go. After that, to change up the images in our nice little masonry grid below, just click on one of the images, click Choose Image, 
change the image to one of the other ones in our gallery and you're good to go. You can do the same for the other images if you don't love them or you can do this to match your brand. Beautiful. To change up the headers that are in between the images, just click on the bold text and now go ahead and start writing a new header. We're going to click on a new section, edit this. All right, and there you have it, folks. Of course, changing the subtext is the same. We can just write out whatever it is that comes to our minds and our hearts. All right, and we'll update. Next, to change the parallax image, you can just click on the outer section settings, these six dots, and click style, and you can change the image. All right, so we would go with like a cool nature background, but it has to be a big image. So one of these larger food images is perfect. Just insert media, and there you have the new background. Now, how does it become a parallax image? Well, that's just a setting. By choosing position center center, and more importantly, attachment fixed, you can see that image, instead of scrolling like it does on scroll, just becomes fixed in one place. And now you achieve the parallax effect, which is defined by having the text and the foreground content move at a different pace than the background content. Of course, there's a more advanced parallax where the images moves like half as fast as the text here, but in this case, we'll stick with the simple parallax. Boy, those noodles look good. Of course, you can also change up the header text by clicking on top of it and changing it. And you can change up the subtext as well, just so it's not lorem ipsum. Okay, finally we have our subscription form here. You can click on that, and that'll basically start working right away as long as you've gotten that MailChimp API and audience list key in like we did before, and update. Down below we have a food gallery, which are just a bunch of images lined up next to each other. We can change the title by clicking on the header and writing in my blogging gallery. So this is food photography, so that subtext holds. Now we can just click on top of any image, like the sandwiches, because I really don't like ham. And you can change the image easily by editing the gallery. So click on the pencil icon in our image gallery. We're going to X out the ham sandwich, and we are going to add in a new image by clicking Add to Gallery. Maybe grab in this uh, mobile phone and Add to Gallery. Even though you can't eat mobile phones, that's OK. And Insert Gallery. Now we're going to update it. Close the ham sandwich, and beautiful. Everything fits great. All right, we've reached the bottom of the page now, so we're done with our home page. It's just time to edit our footer. Great job. So guys, we can edit that footer of yours just by going to Customize at the top of the screen. Then we're gonna click on Footer Widgets. All right, and here we can see we are controlling the widget on the left and the widget on the right. So these are more just the styles of those widgets. We're gonna go back and we're gonna go to Footer Bottom. And then we can change the copyright area here. So this is a theme made by OceanWP and the really awesome Nick. We're gonna say copyright 2019 sitegroundtoots.com. I usually like creating a link here and you can manually write out a link by doing ahref, just as I'm doing here with that open alligator bracket, equals quotation mark. Then we're gonna do HTTP www.sitegroundtoots.com Close the quote, close the bracket. Now sitegroundtoots.com becomes our anchor text. And just close it off. It's good to have a link to yourself on the page. Now we're going to do a vertical bar and all rights reserved. And you can have some more links down there if you want. To get a copyright symbol, we can just go copyright symbol in Google. And we can just pull that from Wikipedia right here. Just copy that bad boy and come back to WordPress and pop it in at the start so people know it's copywritten and publish. Then to actually change what's in your footer, like the food blog by Emma, we're going to X out of here. We're going to click to the dashboard. We're going to hover on appearance and click widgets for the first time. And now we're going to have footer one, which is some widget areas and footer two, footer three and footer four. And it looks like there's nothing in those which is odd. So let's go back to the home page. All right, and we're going to click on edit with Elementor because that must just be an Elementor section. Usually that's some footer widgets, but in this case, Elementor actually created them from scratch, which means they are going to be just like the header. Sorry, I'm all over the place at the moment. They are going to be in the edit with Elementor area in the site footer. Takes a little trial and error sometimes. 
All right, so now we can edit food blog by Emma. We're gonna hit pencil icon. We're gonna call this Java Stop by Greg and Ryan. That's me, and then we're gonna hit the text, and we're gonna write, this is an educational demo website to help you make a WordPress blog at SiteGround. All right, cool, and then we're gonna change the join newsletter to join the email club and if I have time I'll set up a real email newsletter here with SiteGround specific tips and tricks to help you guys be successful and profitable with your new blogs get successful SiteGround tips sent occasionally to your inbox and update and of course you can add like more sections here you can put something in the middle you can also right click and duplicate this column so you have two more sections I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that though, and then just update. All right, and our email form is working, but our social icons are gonna need replacing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the site in a new tab. Just like we did before when we copied that one specific widget, I'm gonna go to Edit with Elementor Site Header, and of course you can do this too. And I'm gonna grab the social icons in our header with a copy, a right click copy, Okay, and then come to our other page with Elementor open, and I'm gonna pop those in right here. To do that, we just need to click in this dotted area and paste. And there we have our new social icons. Now we click on the pencil and drag into the right location, voila. And now we delete the old social icons. You nailed it, and update. All right, now let's hit the hamburger icon and exit to dashboard. Check out our site and our footer is looking awesome. You know what, while we're at it, I think I'll put the logo in the footer. Go to site footer one more time. I'm just gonna drop that logo in here. So I'm gonna open up this text editor area, make a little space right by above the this, and then we can click the add media button just like we would in a blog post. Select our logo, insert into post, and now we have our logo in two locations on the site. So good to have a little repetitive branding. Next, we can click on one of our sub pages like Favorite Eats. And we can see we have a typical category page with all of the blog posts that fall in the category of street food. If you wanna make a new page like this, it's really easy. You just need to have a category first. So let's say you're in the dashboard and you're on your blog posts and you're making some new posts. So there's like a ton of examples that like, I don't know why they're called this weird lorem ipsum like Greek stuff. But if you open a post, you can make a new category like tacos and add new category. All right, so you do that, you get rid of the street food category and then update it. And then you do that for several posts. Like you write a lot of posts about like finance advice or about like yoga. Next you would come to appearance menus and you're just going to click on categories and choose the tacos category add to menu make it a top level menu this would be a drop down if it looks like that all right save that menu and now when we're on our home page like anyone who clicks on tacos would just go to every blog post about tacos so that's how you make a specific uh, menu tab about a certain category of blog posts all right i'm going to delete that though because it doesn't make a ton of sense all right, if we wanna edit our sidebar, let's say we're on the uh, blog page, which is basically just a list of our blog posts, and you wanna edit the sidebar, you can do that really easily. For example, I don't really like having um, the site admin and the logout and all that available to the public. I don't think your audience really needs to see that. And we should change that picture right there and the social icons. So to edit your sidebar, the quickest way to do that is to hover on your site title and click widgets and it'll take us to appearance widgets. Now we can just open up the sidebar items like the archives, delete, meta, open it up, delete, all the things that we want to delete, like maybe we don't have a ton of comments yet, so delete. You want your blog to show your uh, strengths at the start, not show things you don't have, and a lot of times less is more. Remember that, less is more. So we're also gonna delete categories because those can be put in the other menu and 
Really keep it simple. You want to direct attention to the things that you want people to see and take action on. Okay, so now we have our about me. If we open it, it's just this cool little like about me widget, but we have to change that up. So I'm going to delete the image of that stock couple and upload the image of my girlfriend and I, and then change the name to Greg and Krista. And then the description is going to be, all right, cool. And you can change like the social style if you want, which will be your social links. It comes with this about me uh, widget. So that's all part of the same thing. And this is uh, where you can now get your Facebook links. So it might take a little time. Um, it's kind of hard to load like all your pages and then get all the links, but at least you know it looks good. So Google Plus, they should probably delete that one. Um, sadly, I actually loved Google Plus. And then we can just write out the Instagram and the Twitter. I'll do that real quick right now and you don't have to watch me do that. All right, there you have it, folks. If there is a hashtag sign in one of these sections, it'll show the icon. So you want to make sure to get rid of that if you don't have a link to it. And save it. Now when we check out our site, go to the blog. We'll have a nice, clean-looking sidebar. All that makes sense, except for this Instagram widget, which is for Adidas. That's OK. I think Adidas is really cool. So yeah, that is how to edit our sidebar. Now we can go to our contact page and make some edits there. So we have a cool contact form that our website came with. We also have the contact info and then we have some social icons that do another hover feature like that. So we have like three different kinds of social media buttons now. One in the header, one on our sidebar and one in the contact page and an about section and then another newsletter prompt. You might wonder why there's so many newsletter prompts. Well, that's because some people forget to sign up and they need to be reminded. So let's click edit with Elementor here and make sure this page is working. All right, to change your contact info text, just click on top of it. Now we're gonna write a little something. You can easily change the address just by editing the address tab, for example, right here. And you can change the icons as well. You know, everything can be easily manipulated. It's all just right here in an input form. Update. I'm also gonna put in my email here because we do have a real email that you can send questions to for the sake of uh, helping you with this YouTube tutorial. All right, so feel free to email me if you have any questions at all. I will help you, just email me. That said, it's a lot quicker to post a YouTube comment because I see those every morning and my inbox is kind of a disaster right now. So update that and don't bother with the phone or fax because those are fake. Now for a contact form, I think it should be working. It's just going to be a contact form that WordPress came with here from WP Forms. All right, so I'm going to scroll down and just quickly edit the about section. About Java stop. All right, I'm going to hit command A, delete, update that. All right, so let's check out the page. Let's hit the hamburger icon view page and let's see if that contact form is working. So I'm going to do a demo contact, like Greg and greatdearbogger.org. Hi, need some help. Love the tut. And then submit and let's see what happens. So it says green for success. Now I'm going to open my email. As you can see, total disaster. And then after a moment there are two contact form entries that I tried came in. We can click them and we can see that this would be a message that one of your users or your prospective clients would send you. So it looks really nice. You can see their name, email, and message. No fluff, no nonsense sent from my WordPress. And if you click that, it'll just go to the place it was sent from. All right, so that is how to create and edit your Contact Us page. All right, guys, and the final step when you're done making your blog is just to make sure you see the blog like the whole world will. And to do that, we can log out. So we're going to hover on our name in the upper right and click log out. Then we can just hit back to my WordPress. And here's the beautiful fruits of our labor. Just for fun, we can check out a couple pages like the blog page, see what we made, and check out all the awesome new content that you have posted. Super great job, everybody. 
That is the end of our tutorial today. Please make sure to ask any questions you have about SiteGround or WordPress in the comments below because I like helping with every single one of your issues, whether it's large or super small. Love helping you figure out any issue. And if you're making a blog right now, let us know about it too. Just post the link and we'll send some traffic your way and check it out. I want to invite you guys to check out our video on 10 ways to earn money blogging. It's our latest blog income guide and also invite you to our video on how to set up Google Analytics. Those are two things you can check out and get started on right away when you're done making your blog. Hope to see you over there and of course please make sure to subscribe. You can just click on my face on the screen right there and of course hit that notifications turned on button so you get all of our best and latest WordPress tips right when they come out. All right, folks, so I'm going to sign out of our little YouTube classroom right here. Hope you enjoyed the past hour. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Greg Narayan, and I'll talk to you soon.